So I imagine this with a whole group, very awesome kind of group gathering, and that's why it's perfect for catering when you're having parties, functions, festivals. A bowl of this, and everybody's just having one nice bite. Dip into that, you'll have your own plate, so there's no double dipping with coronavirus. Nobody wants anybody's virus at the moment. That's the way that curry should be made. Hey guys, Rom here from Khmer Go Restaurant. I'm director, owner and head chef uh, at Khmer Go. So one of the highlights that we're bringing tonight, uh, today is the uh, Cambodian red curry and the process of how it's being made. So these are the base is of our green paste, as I was saying, garlic, shallots, chilies, galangal, turmeric, kaffir lime leaves and lemongrass. This is at the base of Khmer authentic green. So you can either peel it whole or really authentic Cambodian style. We put the knife through here, make sure it's stable and just give it a plunge. Because regardless of what's going to happen, it's going to be pounded up into a paste anyways. Cambodians are always in a hurry, wanting to ever get everything done fast and we've got big families so we have to feed people really fast. My mother, she's really good. She's, um, I call her an, a really express cooker. So if people could turn up at our house with 20 people, she'll have food ready within no longer than an hour. So start to learn a little bit from her how to speed or simplify the process a little. So we've got shallots here guys. What we just need to do is just probably just cut it into half in here like this and quarter it again. Just want a little bit smaller pieces. And probably. So if you're not familiar with shallots, it's almost like a cross between an, an onion and a garlic. Very aromatic, but very sweet. Then we have our galangal. Okay, so the galangal is, um, if you're not really familiar, it's very aromatic. It almost looks like it's ginger, and quite often you get mistaken that it, it's like ginger, but there is a different smell, different texture, and it does add a little bit of um, uh, its own fragrance. A lot of these ingredients, you probably don't know, but they're very good for your health benefits. Galangal, is not only useful for its roots, um, the leaves are also, when it's just growing, the shoots is quite tender. Um, a lot of Cambodian people um, do blanch it off in the water and we actually eat it like a vegetable with this uh, fish kind of paste that we do. So that um, could be a maybe a next time. <laughs> We are in New Zealand where it's very hard to source to find. 28 years ago when I was living in Christchurch, there's no way that I'll find this. And how it got to here, God knows. But I got my hands on it in the very moment that I did. We managed to grab a bit of this root and as soon as we got this, we started planting it. So every time that we were relocating into a different area, into a different place or a house, we would always make sure we're pulling out every single one of, whether it's lemongrass, potting it in a pot, um, kaffir lime leaves, galangal, and we would take it and transfer it into the next lot of land. And it's continuous, it's journey, and I'm sure that it's come through and it has been um, one of those things that we as uh, Cambodian communities will see what we've all got in our gardens and we're sharing those around and actually um, multiplying it by being able to source these ingredients now. I actually started using my knife probably around about eight, nine years old. Again, my parents, uh, or especially my mum, she wants me to learn the art of Cambodian and cooking and, and be able to actually, um, yeah, be able to work the kitchen. She says that ladies no matter what you want to do in your life but you should always learn how to cook 
to make sure that you're cooking and looking after your family. So that's our culture. Not trying to say that ladies belong in the kitchen, but she said that it's a must because food is always a way to your heart, is what she has taught us or taught me. When the boys are allowed to go and play cricket outside, I am stuck inside pounding ingredients, cutting, chopping, you name everything I probably learned how to do. I didn't appreciate it at the time because, you know, when you're at eight, nine years old, what do you expect? You don't want you don't want to be in the kitchen. You want to be outside playing as well. But the boys had that privilege, unlike me. Chilies, if you're liking it hot, actually a lot of the Cambodian cuisines, a lot of our um, dishes are not done as hot. But, you know, curry is an exception. Curry is one of those things that you do require the, the red, and this is when you start roasting this off. Um, this chilli will give you that kind of red paste. So if you're not good with hot, you can cut the chilies in uh, half. And then I've got my blunt knife again. And you can de-seed them because actually the hottest part of the chilli is the actual seeds, which I love. I really love spicy. But that's just how you would do it and um, slice it fine because you're going to have to pound it so if you can slice it as fine as you can um, it makes it a lot easier when you're actually pounding it to get a very nice smooth paste. Careful lime leaf you're going to find that one is a little bit kind of older a little bit more um, coarse and then you're going to have one that's just shooting. The shoot, the one that's just shooting, very young, tender um, leaf, very beautiful using for garnish um, because it's quite tender. But as in for these one here, they're great for you to pound um, the, to make the curry because you know, you need to bruise it obviously to bring out the flavors. And then you take the stem here out because that's quite, quite hard and as soon as you do that when you split it if you get a hold of these fresh kaffir lime leaves you're going to smell the ar aroma of that kaffir lime leaf because that's why you kind of the process of actually doing it in a mortar and pastel is to bring out the aroma and as you can see as soon as you open that up the aroma is just being released from the leaves so imagine that being pounded with all the other ingredients Combine it together, and then we're just going to finally slice it up. As you can see the colours, and oh my god, if only you can smell the aroma right now. It's really nice. So that's ready to go. So the good thing is we're able to have this gas cooker in this new generation. Back in the time, I'm sure that the guys will be going around collecting wood from the, from the, um, the jungle and then making a fire. And then by the time that's when it will take like hours to get the fire started. But here instantly, thank God for technology, we're able to have um, instant fire straight away. So when we came to New Zealand for the first time in uh, Oh, 1992, my mum always said that she wishes that in life she didn't have to go through so much hardship and that one day that she'll be able to just click her fingers and light will work and snap her fingers and we'll have light, you know, to see and fire to cook. Um, so she's always called New Zealand heaven on earth because when we were given the opportunity from um, fleeing from the genocide, um, New Zealand has given us that second life to relive um, from all that, you know, hardship that we've, you know, my, my family's gone through. Sorry guys. <coughs> oh my goodness. The chilli is getting to us now. But that's because I put the uh, seeds in there. But yeah, to avoid this, 
um, you can actually put it in the oven and just like grill it off. Right, so we just transfer all of this ingredient into the mortar and pestle. Normally the uh, turmeric would also be roasted together if it was fresh. Here, we just put the lemongrass in. As you can see over here, it's one of the processes I should have done earlier, but we had, do have um, the shrimp paste. As I was saying again, the shrimp paste is gonna give it a bit of depth, a bit of flavor um, into our curries. So I'm just wrapping it in the galangal leaf. And what we'll do is we'll chuck it onto the pan and let it kind of toast off. So we'll just leave this in here while we're pounding that. So as you can see, we had roasted the, um, or toasted the shrimp paste. So as soon as you start adding the shrimp into there, this kind of becomes a curry base. Uh, and in Cambodia, commonly, we use the shrimp paste into our grill to make curry. But then we use brahok, which is called brahok, sorry, which is actually fermented fish when we're actually doing like a fish curry base. Now, don't let my mother know this because uh, if that was her, she would make me pound it for another hour. Um, but because we're using it in our curry paste, it can be just a little bit more coarse, but my mother will want that a lot smoother. Now, you know why I was sitting there for hours doing this grilling paste for her. Now, you see the beautiful colour that you've got now. The combination between the green leafy, kaffir lime leaves, the lemongrass, then you've got the red from the chilies, um, and then that kind of, you know, uh, yellow colour from the turmeric, which brings out this kind of like uh, golden orangey colour, and that's the paste when you want to have a nice, um, beautiful uh, curry paste coming through. Again, I mean, we've just kind of slightly roasted our um, ingredients before when that's with the oil I mean my partner he's Indian so as Indians will call it this they call it Rogan and the Rogan is basically when you're actually getting that kind of chili oil which in Chinese they call it chili oil so what we're doing here is we're actually roasting this oil with the grung paste the curry paste um, so grung is the base as I was saying but when we make a curry we call it grung Gari, gari, which means curry, okay? So as soon as you can see that once it reaches the oil, it is now gonna give you that nice, actual, another depth of aroma, and also, at the same time, it's going to give you a nice, beautiful, kind of red color, or color that's gonna bring out that beautiful uh, curry depth. So at this stage, what we're wanting to do Let's just keep roasting that. So what you want to do, as I have here, we've got um, pumpkin. In Cambodian, we call it la pau. So I'm sure all my Cambodian viewers will probably know we have la pau in our curry. Um, so we're going to just do a little bit because we're just doing a small um, portion. And then you have potatoes, or what we call them long, okay? The long brang. And then we have carrots. Optional, you can have this or you, you don't have to have it. But I think that with having that green into there, it's going to give you a lot of that nice contrast of colours. So the good thing is um, I have a ready-made stock, which we call our chicken stock. Um, so this is actually used in our restaurant. Um, but back home, you can just use your uh, water it's not a problem, but that's where you have to add um, a little bit of more fish sauce, more sugar and things like that accordingly to your liking, okay? So, when I'm adding this stock here, now you're going to see what they call the chilli oil 
or the rogan, or what we call the grung. Now this is where the meat goes in, guys. As much meat as you like, as less meat as you like. But the curry, like we said back home, is done with the bones. This is when it starts kind of bubbling and simmering. This is telling us it's time for us to go with the coconut cream. Now, we're very lucky that we're not having to climb up the coconut tree, go up there and I wouldn't be able to get up there anyways, but um, go and pick the coconut and then uh, shell all the coconuts and then start grating it. So that's a long process. So sometimes you do appreciate the, uh, you know, the technology and the, uh, the advanced things that people do come up to simplify. And I am all about simplifying as well. So because we know that everyone's got busy lives. So you can buy coconut cream anywhere around the world thank god for that sophie can you please toast a bit of baguette please because me and um justin's gonna have a bloody great time <laughs> oh my god now as i was saying before we've got we're using chicken breast so make sure you don't overcook that so and this is something that should be eaten instantly because it'll dry it'll go drier if you keep simmering as in why the reason why we use bone in Cambodia is because mainly this type of curry is not an everyday um, food that you have this is actually considered as a treat as you understand the process is actually quite a long process so doing it in big bulks where it's done in like you know 10 or 20 litre pots um, and it's normally done for functions festivals so like we said, this is a specialty food for Cambodians. Um, so that's why when you're using the bone, the bone actually allows um, the chicken to kind of like cook and stay succulent and um, very tasty. I'm sorry, I forgot the last element is uh, we had the tender leaves of our kaffir lime leaf before. So optional whether you want to or not but that just adds another extra kind of um fragrant into your curry and you can just sprinkle that on top baguettes is one of those things that is uh we were colonized by the french one of the great thing that the french did was she introduced baguettes to cambodia um uh, food what i'm doing now is i'm just preparing just little bite-sized pieces Of baguettes. So imagine this with a whole group, very awesome kind of group gathering and that's why it's perfect for catering when you're having parties, functions, festivals. A bowl of this and everybody's just having one nice bite. Dip into that, you'll have your own plate so there's no double dipping with coronavirus, nobody wants anybody's virus at the moment. You have your own bowl, your own thing, dip it so that that bread there is absorbing all of that juice, all of that flavour and that's your first bite that you want to have. Here you go guys. That's the way that curry should be made, really nice. Look, if you like what you've um, seen today and you want to see more, just don't forget to subscribe to Story Bites and uh, hopefully we'll be able to produce more videos for you guys to, um, to see in the future. So thank you. Hopefully you give our curry a bit of a try and let me know what uh, you feel about the curry and your feedback. Cool. Thanks, guys.